الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عظم الله وأجورنا وأجوركم من مصابنا أبي عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام dear viewers from across the world thank you for joining us for yet another night here in the 10 days of Ashram Muharram where we send to you our condolences and indeed our condolences to our dear awaited saviour and as you know for these next few nights we're going to try and bring to you simple lessons that you can take away from the tragedy of Karbala. Not just to see this event as something to mourn and weep over, rather something to gain from, rather something to shape the rest of your life and to shape your future, and most importantly, to shape your Akhirah. And we'll do this by deriving lessons, but also by delivering you pieces of poetry that will help you reflect and emotionally connect, and they'll be delivered by my dear brother, Ali Fadl. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, my dear respective viewers. Yes, just to echo the words of, of Sadiq, we aim to connect the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam, through, the, through your screens, into your homes, through the mind and also through the heart. And I guess the responsibility here is to describe the poem. The poem is speaking about Umm al and her lonely plight after she has found out that um, her dear sons uh, have passed away. Uh, and the news of Karbala has reached her. And the poet Nouri Sardar also says, I stand alone after the lights of my eyes went to serve the eyes of Hussein was my intent. To a grip of grief and sorrow My heart I've lent For them all to talk about me I had not meant They look with their eyes At my heart's demise and say beneath this woman's heart her son Hussein lies they look with their eyes at my heart's demise and say beneath this woman's heart her son Hussein lies I am left here without children in Medina All I talk to is the night and grave of Zahra The night taunts me and says all her children left her and Zahra's grave to my words gives no answer No hope in my words, sorrow unanswered And yet the night it still taunts me Your sons were murdered no hope in my words, sorrow unanswered And yet the night it still taunts me Your sons were murdered In, in my empty house My eyes look out to my window in my empty house, my eyes look out my window All it sees is my murdered sons and my tears flow Every strike on my Abbas strikes my like arrows Every memory of them leaves me a shadow Shadows do not speak But they cry and weep Indeed I am but 
not a shadow with blood by my feet Shadows do not speak but they cry and weep Indeed I am but a shadow with blood by my feet They all stare at me their eyes upon me they say this old lonely woman and they speak of me they say this old lonely woman and they speak of me many thanks to the poet Noor Sardar just um, to reconnect your hearts to the tragedy of Imam Hussein alayhi salam of course, we are focusing on the first five nights. We are going to be putting a lot of emphasis into the women, uh, the women and children associated with the tragedy of Karbala. And then, inshallah, on the late, latter nights, we'll focus more uh, on Ayn Akbar, for example, and sure. Qasim yeah. alayhi salam, and Abbas alayhi yes. salam. So. Yes, and I think the, the reason why we wanted to take this approach is that typically we remember the, the women and the children after Karbala. Mm -hmm towards Arba'een, towards the journey, towards the dungeons, etc, etc. But we forget to an extent the difficulty that the women and children actually went through during the lead up and indeed on the day of Ashura itself. And this is the reason why we wish to explore this. And of course, as, as we now realize, today's evening we dedicate to Umm al-Banin, a lady that to any Shia household is one that is revered, that is respected, that is loved, that is used and her name is invoked when you lose something you recite a fatiha in her name for Umm al-Banin and you find it. it it's a name that is so well known to our hearts and yet I feel we do somewhat an injustice to actually taking simple and derive simple lessons from her for Umm al-Banin salam yesterday we spoke about Imam Hussein leaving and leaving a child behind and it's almost like a role reversal here we have Umm al banin now waiting behind, mm. having raised four children in the sole purpose of serving. Mm. It wasn't quite the Imam Hussein goodbye to Fatima Alila where it's I'm leaving, it's a difficult decision, you have to remain here. This was more, no, I've set you up for this. Mm. This is your role. It's said that Umm al salam preferred to take care of Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein more so than she did her own children and that even to the extent that Umm al banin would say that Abbas don't play with them because they are your masters you are meant to serve them mm. and in that there is a beauty to be found there is a level of respect of Ali Muhammad to be found even if you've married Ali ibn Abi Talib Amir al Mu'mineen, you still have a level of respect for Ahl al-Bayt I, I find it mesmerizing I really do. Yeah. And these poems really pick up on this. They really pick up on that theme. Yeah. To go a little bit further though, what is it about this lesson of Umm al banin that we can take away? It starts very simply with a notion of submission which we mentioned yesterday. And I think to start to understand Karbala in its simplest form, Usul and its principles of faith is so critical. And when we understand Tawheed, the oneness of God, it's then very easy to understand why we submit to God. So we understand this oneness. We understand this submission. And once we, and we, understand, once we understand this submission, this notion of sacrifice almost becomes just a given. Mm. If you submit to something, sacrifice isn't even a question. When you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not a case of, oh Allah, I'm giving this to you. It's a case of saying, oh Allah, this was actually never mine in the first place. Umm al-Banin has submitted to the extent that if you were to call family a materialistic thing or a dunya-based thing, even something as dear to her as that, she saw that it was only for the service of Aba Abdullah and thus for the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for me, the first thing that we take away and that I feel is so critical to take away is this level of submission and Imam al-Sadiq, I end on this, Imam al-Sadiq has this beautiful hadith where he describes submission as this. He says, when a servant says, whatever Allah wills, there is no power and no strength except in Allah, la quwwata illa billah. Allah says, oh my angels, 
my servant has submitted, so assist him. Hasten to him and grant his request. And I think when we hear that last bit, hasten to him and grant his request or her request, it then makes sense that when we ask through Umm al banin that if she gave and submitted to that extent, then of course her request is always heard. Of course, and her stand is so much... Uh, it's, uh, her stand, as we know, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so effective, it's so uh, magnificent that he has placed her as a door to hajat, mm. as a door towards people's needs. So in any situation that you find that's, just, that's difficult, you find there's a trial or a tribulation, in any situation it is, you always invoke the name of Umm al banin mm -hmm. And the tragedy of Umm al banin which is associated with Karbala, which is associated with these nights of Muharram, is so that um, she does sacrifice all her children towards the cause of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. But this, this, the real tragedy is when she receives the news mm. of uh, the passing or the martyrdom of her four sons and Imam Hussain. But her desperation to find out about Hussein first mm. is what makes this very unique and makes this um, quite, uh, quite emotional. Because when the poet comes to her, he says, he says, look, I bring you my condolences. She says, I don't want to know about my sons. Just tell me about Hussein. And he begins to name the different uh, sons. I, my, I send my condolences to Ja'far and Uthman. Mm. Um, she says, I don't care. And then she mentions Abbas. Even then she says, look, that's fine. I, I'm, the loss of Abbas is great, but tell me about Hussein. And then finally, when he does tell her about Hussein, that's when uh, the tragedy really, really starts for her. Mm. And, uh, w um, and then the return of Sayyidah Zainab as well, even magnifies this tragedy for her. And I think one, one thing that we forget that at this point it is said that when she's received this news, Umm al banina is actually one of the first people to then initiate a majlis. She called the women of Medina to then come around yeah. to mourn and mourn and mourn. And I think we give so much credit and rightly so to Sayyidah Zainab for instituting Aza, but also Umm al banina yeah. She, as far as historians describe her, was an incredible poetess. Someone who had lines of poetry that are seen and written still in history that you can reflect on. So when you take this next evening, this next night where you're conducting your aza and you're beating your chest and you're thinking about those words, perhaps dedicate that to Umm al Inshallah. 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 You have another piece for us, Inshallah. Yes, um, yes. so as, as I was mentioning the fact that this is now the story depicting how Bishr comes to Umm al um through the words of Nur al-Sadar. This is the poet who comes to Medina Om al tis greets this visitor Om al with a voice of sorrow speaks as the tears of a mother flow down her cheeks she stands an old woman so aged and so weak and tells the poet, I am Hussein's mother. And tells the poet, I am Hussein's mother. Oh poet, tell me of my beloved Hussein. For I let him go and alone I remain A mother's son is the blood within her veins Tell me what happened in the land Karbala Tell me what happened 
in the land Karbala Ummul Bainin The lone poet answers We left Abbas with no hands by the river his iron hands both fell before his banner I'm by him Abdullah, Uthman and Ja'far She cries a scream of death as her pure heart breaks Oh poet, don't tell me of Abbas's fate Nor my children, only Hussein I await for Abbas was born to die for his brother The poet answers with death upon his tongue Hussein was left in that desert all alone Only bodies in front of him Blood and bone Only his sons and men and children martyred only his sons and men and children martyred. Many thanks to the poet Nur Sadar. And as I mentioned, this it, this poem does go on and on about uh, the conversation between Bishr mm. and Umul Benin, but depicts it really, really like to the to uh, the exact conversation that happened in poetic form, mm. which, is, which is pretty great from. Uh, from the Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Inshallah, join us after the break where we'll continue our remembrance and our lessons that we can take from Umm al Banin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to our second night where we remember Umm al Banin alayhi salam and indeed her lesson that she gives us upon submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by sacrificing her four sons and offering them in the way of Aba Abdullah. And we wanted just to touch on something very briefly here, which is a subtle point, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a very profound verse in the Qur'an where we all know where it says that I do not ask for any other payment from you except the Prophet saying except that you love my family and when we look at the sacrifice of Umm al-Banin alayhi salam and what she actually gave it's the exact definition of that verse in that the things that she had most closest to her was solely just given for the love of this Qurba, for the love of this family and I ask myself before anyone else this When this service of Aba Abdullah that we conduct year in year out In the service of the other Imma alayhim salam and the Ma'asumin alayhim salam That we offer across the year Is it really done with this intention of serving the family of Ali Muhammad Or are there other reasons to why we do it? And it's, very, it's a very difficult thing to ensure that intention is separated But if it were to be the case that what we were offering was on that level of Umm al Binin alayhi salam, where it's a case of life or death of something that you love. Perhaps we can assess our intention whereby would we still have that conviction to give the way in which we give our time, or would it be a case of actually maybe I need to hold this one back? And that's just one, the first thing I want to bring up. The second thing that I think from a practical perspective is this 
in the Christian faith, they have Lent, the time of 40 days where you give up something specific. Some people say something trivial like chocolate or whatever, whatever. And we then have Shah Ramadan, but Shah Ramadan, you could say something decreed upon us, it's imposed upon us. It's something where you must refrain from X, Y, and Z between time A and time B. During these 40 days, something very simple and practical, perhaps we can take away from Umm Benin salam, is to say, okay, from the first of Muharram, or if you're watching this on the second, third, fourth, whatever it may be, until the day of Arba'in, is there something I can actually sacrifice, something materialistic, that I can sacrifice just to symbolize that I am in this state of mourning for these 40 days? Mm. A very simple challenge. It could be as trivial as chocolate, as trivial as meats, as trivial as whatever. It's wearing black, it's not wearing perfume, it's not trimming your beard, it's we're not wearing a colored hijab for these... Whatever it is, is there something that we can take from Umm al that's just maybe that little step further to make this Muharram a little bit more meaningful to say, actually, yeah, let, let me give this a go. 40 days, similar to Lent, that I can give up in the name of Umm al salam. And if we can do this, perhaps that is the start of trying to do the opposite way around of sacrifice, understanding why we sacrifice it's for submission and submission for the way of Aba Abdullah, which is no doubt for the message of Islam. Very wise words. Um, I think that's definitely something people can consider um, from home. Actually practical steps to making sure that this Muharram is a different Muharram to your normal um, 10 nights of service. And it's actually taking something away. Brilliant words, brilliant words. In terms of the Masaib of, of the nights, we are remembering Umm al -Banin. And something which was very significant in Everything that, that preceded or, or came before the events of Karbala. Imam Ali alayhi salam, after the passing of Fatima al Zahra, um, was in search of, uh, of a spouse uh, and a wife. So he asked his brother to look into the genealogy of different families um, and to find a woman who will bring sons of great valor mm. and of great courage and of great honor. And so he ended up marrying Fatima al-Kilabiya, who is her actual name. Uh, but Umm al-Bani means the mother of sons. And when he married Fatima al-Kilabiya, the first request that Umm al bani had to Amir al muminin and this is not vice versa, this is the first request when she found out about this family, and the prestige of this family, she already knew about this family, but when she entered this family and found Imam Hassan, found Imam Hussein, the first thing she requested from him was that he does not call her Fatima. SubhanAllah. He does not call her Fatima. Why? In fear that it may invoke some memory in Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein that they may remember their own mother Fatima as Zahra, Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. This was the first step into her household, into her service towards this, this, this holy household. And it carried on through her children when it comes to Abu al Abbas and the rest of them, Uthman Ja'far. So when it comes to the actual tragedy after the aftermath of, of Karbala and the messenger of uh, Bishr ibn Hadlam, the messenger, he comes to the edge of Medina and that's when he starts to narrate words um, to give the tidings or to give the story of Karbala or to give the news basically mm -hmm. of what happened to Karbala and this is where everyone congregated and he said Ya ahlaya thrib la muqam lakum biha qutil al husayn fadmu'i midraru O oh, people of Yathrib, O oh, people of Medina, this is not your place to stay, this is not your place to remain. Why? For Imam al Hussein was slain in the lands of Karbala. Umm al Banin then comes to see this commotion and says, O oh, Bishr, tell me of what happened to my son Hussein. Here he says, and he bows down. In, in, in emotion and he's almost shy to tell the news to Umm al-Banin and he says to her, my condolences to you over the loss of your three sons, Uthman, Ja'far 
and uh, he, she says, don't tell me about my sons, tell me about Hussein. You have broken my heart, tell me about my son Hussein. This is when he begins to say, For he was slain by the lands of Farad. My condolences to you, Mulbaneen, on the passing of your son Abbas. This is when she was holding, apparently, she, by the narration, she was holding uh, Fadl, the son of uh, Abbas, السلام, and she dropped to the floor. And when she regained her consciousness, she says, You have broken my heart. Oh, Bishop, tell me about Hussein. This is when he broke, and he broke the news to Umm al Banin and says, Ya Umm al Banin, bi musabiki, musaba bi abdillah al Hussein. My condolences to you, Mulbaneen, on the passing, the martyrdom, the murder of Hussein in Karbala. After the time. Had, uh, had had been spent and the the caravan of Sayyidah Zainab came back to Medina. There was one story which I'd like to narrate before we, we ask for your hajat, we ask for your du'as. This, this, this narration happened where Umm al -Banin opened what's called a Bayt al-Ahzan or she opened uh, like a place within her home that's she left, she let the ones who were closest to Umm al-Banin mourn the passing of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So, but the caravan, the caravan of Sayyidah Zainab came back to Medina. And upon the return of Medina, Sayyidah Zainab was, the first person she wanted to see was Umm al-Banin. So there was a knock on Umm al-Banin's door. And then Umm al-Banin says, says to the, to the person coming, she says, listen, whoever's at the door, please leave us alone for I and my, my family members are mourning. But then the news comes to her and it says, this person is not any normal person. For let her in, Umm al -Banin then says, the knock on the door, I know who this person who this person is, let her in. As she walked in, Zayda Zainab comes and Umm al -Banin come together. The first things they said to each other, Sayyidah Zainab says, oh Abbas salam. She starts to scream the name of Abbas salam. and Umm al -Banin would say Hussein. This is the love that they had for, for both their brother and their sons, um, Imam al Hussein and Abu al Fadl al Abbas. Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raji'oon. Wa sayyalamu alladhina dhalamu ayyamu al-qalabin yanqalibun. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Ahsant. And with that, inshaAllah, we ask for your du'as. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst the servants of Umm al Banin alayhi salam and to be amongst the servants of Abu Fadl al Abbas. And I leave you with this the words of Umm al Banin herself. When upon hearing the news, she said, all of the arteries of my heart are torn. May all of my children and whatever that exists under this heaven be sacrificed for the sake of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And may the sacrifices that we now offer towards our faith, towards our masters, and ultimately towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be in a very similar light. We take inspiration from her and we ask through her to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to cure all of the sick, to forgive our sins, and to allow us to be amongst the servants that hold the slogan of Ya Litharat al Hussein. Inshallah, we'll see you for tomorrow's show. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.